For today's video, we're counting down the 15 most unusual machines in the world. Starting with number 15, Brazil's Wave Generator. So in recent years, scientists have been looking at ways for creating dependable and predictable clean energy. Now, wave generation may just be the best way forward, and Brazil was one of the early adopters of this technology. In 2012, they created a funky yellow prototype that converted the movement of waves into electric power. And today, this technology has been expanded on to create improved wave generators. Number 14, La Princesa. In what can only be described as a very strange move, in 2008, the city of Liverpool decided to pour one and a half million pounds into the operation of a giant mechanical spider. Built by French performance art company La Machina as part of a 2008 European Capital of Culture celebration, this 15-meter-long spider spent five days roaming around the streets of Liverpool. Now, getting it around was not easy. After all, it weighed 37 tons, required 250 crew members, and moved at a speed of 3 kilometers an hour. However, once all was said and done, many thought this strange machine was pretty cool. Number 13. The Tree Shaker while harvesting crops, such as olives, almonds, and cherries, is a time-consuming process, the Pelink Expand R5090 and Pelink Buggy 5000 shakers can do the job in a flash. And that's because after extending a PVC tarp around a tree, the shaker will put its robotic arms around it and rapidly shake it. It's so effective that it can remove 99% of a tree's fruit in just one go and harvest a total of 1,200 trees per day, making it really efficient. Number 12, the Sullivan Generator. So while Shark Tank is known for having crazy pitches, the Sullivan Generator may just be the most insane of them all. Pitched by inventor Mark Sullivan, the idea was that it would take advantage of the Earth's rotation to create electricity from salt water. Now the hope here was that this rotation effect would be strong enough to spin the water into a hurricane, thereby turning electric generators and creating green electricity. However, the reality is, is that the science behind it was phony. And given his insane ask of a million dollars for 10% equity, he was quickly thrown out of the tank. Number 11, Big Bertha. So creating a massive underground tunnel is no easy task. And so when the Washington State Department of Transportation needed to make a three kilometer long double-decker tunnel as part of State Route 99, they decided to bring in Big Bertha. Designed specifically for the creation of the tunnel, she was brought to Seattle in a set of four 6,100 ton pieces. And once assembled, it came in at a massive 17 and a half meters in diameter. Despite its size and power, technical hiccups and costly repairs meant that it took over five years to finish the project. And once the job was complete, Big Bertha was promptly scrapped as her parts couldn't be reused or transferred to other job sites. Number 10, the Slothbot. So while the Slothbot may be slow, it certainly is pretty mighty. It's located at the Atlanta Botanical Garden in Georgia. It spends its days sliding along a 30 meter long steel cable. Intentionally slow, its job is to collect vital environmental data such as temperature and carbon dioxide levels as it moves along. This is important because its main goal is to act as a private investigator. More specifically, the Slothbot in Atlanta monitors a genus of rare orchids. Known as Stanhopia orchids, they're a mystery because unlike with most orchids, scientists aren't quite sure how these flowers pollinate. While native to mountainous regions of the Ecuadorian rainforest, about 90% of the world's Stanhopia orchids are located in this garden. Now, the orchids that are in this garden are pollinated by bees. However, these bees are not known to live high up in the Andes. So as a result, scientists are trying to figure out if there's either a mystery insect that's behind the pollination or if it's actually an unknown population of mountainous bees that's behind this pollination. By collecting info that can then be cross-referenced with what scientists already know about high-altitude insects, these scientists can hopefully solve this pollination puzzle. Now, beyond this particular mission, the Slothbot may have uses in the jungles of South America. Since the robot mimics sloths, it would be able to exist without disrupting local wildlife. As a result, it could have a leg up in collecting data when compared to more conventional methods. It's also worth noting that the Slothbot has an interesting origin story. After a family vacation to Costa Rica, inventor Magnus Egerstedt developed what he was described as a mild obsession with two-toed sloths. The sloth's very existence stumped him as he wondered how it was possible for the sloth to support such a large body with such a small diet. This inspired him to create a super slow and energy efficient machine, and the end result of that desire was the Slothbot. 
Number nine, the Nutter machine. So in recent years, milk substitutes like soy, almond, and oat milk have all entered the mainstream. However, in order to get your hands on them, you generally have to buy an overpriced carton at the grocery store. Given the fact that these milks often chock full of preservatives such as oils, gum fillers, and sugars, this might not be the best situation for those who try to live an all-natural lifestyle, making the Nutter machine a great solution. To start, you put in a cup of your favorite nuts, seeds, or any combination of the two. You then add water, set the milk to a hot, warm, or room temperature setting, and then after a few minutes of blending, you've got a nut milk that you can either drink with or without the pulp. At the moment, the machine costs about 250 bucks, and that's not including extra parts such as nut packs and matcha that can be added to your order. Now, despite this high price, they've certainly been a hit. As of the time of writing, they're completely sold out, meaning that you'll have to hold tight if you're looking for your own machine. Now, while the concept itself is pretty cool, what really gave the company its headwind was its appearance on the famous American show Shark Tank back in January of last year. When they pitched the idea to the sharks, they were not only impressed, but they loved their margins. After all, while it cost Nutter about $42 to make one of these machines, they sell them at about 600% markup. In 2021, they had $793,000 in sales, and in 22, were apparently on track to make $6 million. However, their valuation of $500,000 for 5% of their business proved to be too rich for the blood of the sharks. While it is impossible to know whether or not the sharks made a mistake given the fact that Nutter is a private company that doesn't publish their profits, given its seemingly thriving website, I bet that Nutter is doing quite well. Number 8. Solar Powered Satellites so since the Earth rotates, we've got a day and we've got a night, and this makes solar power a challenge. However, up in space, the sun is always shining, and it's this premise that's lent credibility to the idea of solar-powered satellites. The idea is that after the solar rays are taken in by satellites with solar panels, they'll be transported to Earth wirelessly. Shooting out a laser beam or using microwave power have been the most plausible methods put forward. Now, in essence, something like a laser beam would work by harnessing all the solar power and refocusing it to a very specific target on Earth, which would then take this light and convert it into energy like a regular solar panel would. This strategy works pretty well because it doesn't interfere with any radio or television signals and it requires relatively small pieces of equipment. However, it can become problematic because the atmosphere can easily weaken the beam, making this source of transmission pretty inefficient. As such, microwave beams have also been suggested as being a great source of transmission. These work in a similar way to laser beams in that they're generated from solar energy and then beamed down to a specific location. Microwave beams are often considered to be superior to lasers because they're efficient enough to retain about 85% of the energy created in space. However, their one major downside is they can interfere with TV and radio signals. Now, while both methods have their advantages and disadvantages, major countries such as China and Japan have begun to seriously invest in them. However, it's the United States that's most ahead of the curve. That's because in January of 2023, the California Institute of Technology launched the Microwave Array for Power Transfer Low Orbit Experiment, or MAPLE for short. This involves sending up a transmitter to space, and once it was there, it beamed the microwaves back to the lab in California. This was notable because it was the first time that this tech had ever been tested in real life, and as such, it's an important first step in making solar power satellites a mainstream. Moving on to number seven, Spot. While pet dogs are well-loved, super smart, mechanized police dogs are generally not so well-received. Yet the development of these dystopian dogs has been on the rise, and Spot is one of the main examples of this in action. Developed by Boston Dynamics, it has the ability to map an environment, move through rough terrain, sense obstacles, lift packages, and in a rather fun twist, walk down stairs backwards. This can be done fully autonomously, and this, in a sense, makes it a leveled up version of a regular police dog. Thus, despite its cost of about 75 grand per unit, it's piqued the interest of police departments, and in particular, the NYPD has had significant relationship with the project. Back in 2020, the NYPD began to use it in intense environments, specifically in dangerous operations such as hostage situations in the Bronx and an incident at a public housing building in Manhattan. Unsurprisingly, the department received a ton of backlash online. Many criticized the NYPD for enacting what looked like a dystopian militarization effort and for funding a tech and money-fueled power imbalance between citizens and police forces. When one further considers the fact that Spot was introduced into the force in 2020 during the wake of the BLM protests and calls to soften the power of the police forces, it's no surprise that it received negative press. 
so as a result, it wasn't long until the NYPD pulled Spot from its forces altogether. However, recent events have shown that this move was not permanent. That's because in April of 2023, New York City Mayor Eric Adams announced the reintroduction of the dogs into the police force, and ever since, they've been continuously integrated into the NYPD system. Apparently, they'll only be used during life-threatening situations, such as bomb threats, and according to Mayor Adams, quote, I believe the technology is here. We cannot be afraid of it. A few loud people were opposed to it, and we took a step back. That's not how I operate. I operate on looking at what's best for the city, end quote. But what do you think? Should Spot be allowed to serve for the NYPD, or should it be brought back to the dog pound? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 6. The Large Hadron Collider So of all the entries on this list, the one that takes the cake for being the most useful to society is the one and only Large Hadron Collider. It's also known as the LHC. It's located on the border between Switzerland and France near the Swiss city of Geneva, and creating it was quite the project. Taking 10 years to build, it required the efforts of over 10,000 scientists spread across hundreds of universities and laboratories across 100 countries. The result is what is now the world's largest and most powerful particle collider. But first, what is a particle collider? Well, in short, it's a machine that allows two particles, subatomic particles, to be shot at each other at super high speeds, allowing some scientists to record the impact and conduct important scientific experiments. More than 30,000 of these particle colliders exist worldwide, but the LHC is the most advanced of them. It's buried 175 meters underground. Now, it's essentially a 27 kilometer long tube that's powerful enough to allow these particles to travel at speeds of close to the speed of light. This is possible because the entire tunnel is essentially a massive vacuum, and in order to power these collisions, it makes use of an incredibly strong magnetic field. Created with the help of over 1,200 super strong electromagnetic coils, each coil is massive, coming in at 15 meters long and weighing 35 tons. To make sure that the temperatures are optimal for experiments, the collider is generally maintained at a really low negative 271 degrees Celsius. For reference, this is colder than outer space, and it's crucial because it allows the magnets to act as effective superconductors, which in turn is what makes the LHC the incredible tool that it is. Best of all, while the LHC only opened in 2008, it's managed to facilitate some of the most important science experiments to date. For example, in 2008, the facility was used to create microscopic black holes that were designed to allow physicists to detect new dimensions. Then in 2012, it made a real name for itself when it detected the long sought after Higgs boson. This is also known as the quote God particle. This new discovery was critical in explaining the standard model of particle physics. It also appears that it may help us determine what dark matter is, with this being the substance that makes up about 27% of the known universe. So yeah, it is fair to say that the LHC will continue to play a massive role in the advancement of science. Number 5. Out of Thin Air Be it coal, gas, wind, or solar, until recently power-generating machines needed fuel in order to operate. However, in 2020, scientists from the University of Massachusetts found a way to generate energy out of thin air. In essence, the device consists of three parts, two electrodes and a thin layer of nanowire film with tiny holes less than 100 nanometers in diameter. As these holes let in moisture from the air around it, it passes through the device and creates a small man-made cloud. This cloud is formed due to the fact that the moisture knocks against these tiny holes' edges, creating an electric charge imbalance between the layered chambers. Now, when the imbalance reaches a certain point, it discharges as lightning into the device. Since it does it at a constant rate, it works very similarly to a battery, and according to the team's measurements, one setup can produce about 0.5 volts of energy for 20 hours, until lowering down to a constant stream of about 0.35 volts. Yet after about 5 hours, it can apparently be renewed back up to 0.5 volts, making this machine dependable and predictable. According to Jun Yao, who was one of the leads on the project, quote, The idea is simple, but it's never been discovered before, and it opens all kinds of possibilities. You can imagine harvesters made one-of-a-kind material for rainforest environments and another for more arid regions, end quote. Now, it should be noted that it's not perfect. Unsurprisingly, the researchers found that the more humid it was outside, the better the device worked, meaning that these machines are best suited to wetter environments. The total energy output of half a volt is also incredibly small, and there are worries that it may not scale up incredibly well. While concerning, the scientists found that they could increase the voltage by attaching multiple devices together, meaning that scalability concerns could be addressed by simply having multiple machines. 
Unfortunately, this may not be enough. When asked for his thoughts, Donald Sadoway, who was a materials chemist at MIT, noted that it is, quote, hard to know what to make of this. It's not apparent what kind of practical numbers can emerge. Investors would ask what we can expect in terms of power output in watts and the cost, end quote. So since angel investors and governments are only likely to pour in money if they get some more exact stats, these machines may not get the funding necessary to become full-scale prototypes. However, given how cool the technology is, I hope they ultimately become a reality. Number 4. The Gustav Gun Of all the war machines thought up by the Germans on their attempt towards world domination during World War II, the Gustav Gun was probably the most unusual. First launched in 1941, it was the largest gun ever built, with a barrel length of nearly 33 meters, a height of nearly 12 meters, and a weight of over 1,300 tons. It had the ability to fire massive artillery pieces at a rate of about one every 30 to 45 minutes, at distances up to 47 kilometers. In theory, it should have been quite mobile, modeled upon the successful rail guns of wars prior. The idea is it could move up and down railway tracks to attack enemy targets. It also had quite a bit of firepower. After all, its 4.5-ton explosive rounds and 6.5-ton armor piercers were specifically designed to decimate the forts along the Maginot Line. Now, this proved to be a moot point. After all, the Germans ended up simply going around the Maginot Line. And in any case, the Gustav gun was completed far too late to see any action on French soil. Yet, that didn't make the gun useless, and between 1941 and 42, it saw action during the siege of Sevastopol against the Soviet Union's. Contrary to Hitler's hopes, this battle proved why the Gustav gun was doomed to fail. You see, in order to be of use, the German army first had to ship the weapon to Crimea aboard 25 trains. Then, around 3,800 men had to spend about four weeks preparing the site, with this including the excavation of a large 8-meter-long tunnel to shelter the mechanized weapon between shots. Assembling the gun required a further 1,250 engineers, scientists, and guards working round the clock for three days, building specially built double rail tracks to move around. Once all this was ready, a crew of 250 soldiers and engineers had to be on hand just to fire a single shot. This not only proved to be very labor intensive, but not worth the trouble. After all, the army could fire the weapon about 14 times per day, and after around 300 shots, the enormous barrel would have to be replaced. This meant yet another shipment from Krupp's German factory and a bunch of sitting around. Once all was said and done, it required more than a thousand tons of steel, thousands of man hours, and millions of Reichsmarks, all for something that, in the grand scheme of things, fired just 48 shots. So, therefore, while this half gun, half vehicle monstrosity was very unique, it faced an early retirement, as after this trial run, it never saw the battlefield ever again. Number 3 Da Vinci's War Machines. Just like in today's day and age, people needed money in order to make their way through society. For someone like da Vinci, art wouldn't always cut it. After all, he was also a talented engineer, and in order to make a living, he would combine the two passions to create incredible war machines. Working on behalf of the Sforza and Borgia Dukes of Italy and the French Valois Kings, he was heavily involved in the Italian wars taking place across the peninsula during his lifetime. The reasons for him being hired are twofold. First and foremost, he was really good at organizing military celebrations. After successful battles, he would create magnificent spectacles of his patrons' military achievements using advanced dramatic technologies. For example, in May of 1518, da Vinci created a celebration for his patron Francois I of France. As part of the festivities, he staged an elaborate multi-sensory reenactment of the Battle of Margiano, complete with the siege and capture of a castle. In order to reenact the battle, falconets fired missiles of paper and mortars shot out balloons, making the entire thing an awe-inspiring masterpiece. Beyond being a good showman, da Vinci also earned his keep by creating incredible new war machines that, much like the flying machines, were in ways far ahead of their time. One of the most interesting is his armored car, a predecessor to the modern tank. The design featured a circular platform on wheels encased in a protective shell. At the sides, an array of light cannons would stick out, and the idea was that it could charge into the lines of enemy soldiers while keeping the occupants safe. However, while the design was certainly ahead of its time, in da Vinci's form it was too clunky to work well, and as a result it never saw the battlefield. Another unusual machine concocted by da Vinci was a giant crossbow. Designed to be used to break sieges, this massive weapon would have spanned 27 yards and would have allowed an attacking army to hurl large stones or flaming bombs onto a city. 
While this too never saw the battlefield, its design stands as a testament to da Vinci's creativity and his understanding of mechanics and leverage. A final war machine that da Vinci proposed was the Scythe Chariot, probably the most fantastical of the bunch. It was likely inspired by the chariots of ancient times. In essence, it was a chariot with a massive front piece with spinning scythes, and in theory this would have caused all the men in front of the chariot to get caught in the blades as the horse moved past at fast speeds. However, the design for this was likely too far and too large and clunky to be a practical use. So while all of da Vinci's war machines were pretty creative, they were probably a bit too unusual to be of practical use to his patrons. Number 2. Da Vinci's Flight Machines So keeping with da Vinci, when you think of them, the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, or the Vitruvian Man are probably what comes to mind. However, da Vinci was far more than just a painter, a true renaissance man. He excelled in practically every artistic and mathematical endeavor. This extended to the creation of machines, and during his life he made a number of ambitious inventions in order to pursue his dream of flight. Perhaps his most famous is his flying machine. It's known as an ornithopter. The concept is quite simple. In essence, it tried to turn humans into birds by giving them wings. In case of da Vinci's ornithopter, the pilot would lie face down in the center. They would then put their feet on a pedal that would crank a rod and pulley system. Then the system would flap the wings, which would come in at a wingspan of about 10 meters. These wings were this large because the goal was for them to be the same relative size as the wings of a bird. Yet while a few short flights have been recorded, ornithopters remain impractical, since it's nearly impossible to generate enough force to allow someone to remain in flight. While the ornithopter may have been a failure, it seems like da Vinci's aerial screw concept was better designed. In essence, it had a circular platform with a large spiraling sail of linen in the middle. This would be connected to a wheel with rings, with the idea being that if spun, the screw sail would give the vehicle enough lift to fly. According to Professor Walter Isaacson, it was likely devised for a theatrical spectacle, and while small models were made, a full-size one with people on board never came to be. However, what's incredible about the aerial screw is that in 2022, a drone that had a similar design managed to fly. However, da Vinci's most successful flight machine of all time was a hang glider. Now, technically, he was not the inventor of the concept. After all, gliding had been observed in animals since ancient times. Yet it was da Vinci that was the first to put a glider design on the written page. The idea was to create a machine with a wingspan considerably larger than a pilot's body. This would then capture the wind currents and provide lift, allowing the pilot to sail through the air. Unfortunately, there's no physical evidence to suggest that da Vinci ever constructed the glider. However, the design was so good that many modern physicists believe that it would probably work. This led to a BBC documentary team meeting with the University of Liverpool's Flight Science and Technology Research Group. With the help of a simulator, they determined that with the addition of a rudder, a functional glider could have been built with the materials and tools da Vinci would have had access to. So given the fact that gliders would only become common centuries later, I think it's fair to say that da Vinci was way ahead of his time. Number 1. The Tesla Optimus while most factories rely on human labor, there may soon be machines that can do almost everything a human can do. And while there are quite a few of these in development, Tesla's Optimus is perhaps the most famous and controversial of the bunch. Featuring a fully humanoid head and self-driving torso, powered by 40 electromechanical actuators, it will reportedly be able to carry a maximum of 20 kilograms. At 173 centimeters in height and about 57 kilograms in weight, it will be the approximate size of an adult human. And while this might be a bit scary, Elon Musk has promised that there will be some limits on the machine. More specifically, he said that its maximum speed will be a paltry 8 kilometers per hour, and despite its size, it will be weak enough for most humans to easily overpower it, just in case the machine goes haywire. Musk has also said that it, quote, is intended to be friendly, of course, and to navigate through a world built for humans and eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks, end quote. And he hopes that in the future, quote, physical work will be a choice, end quote. Now, the first rendition of these robots was shown by Musk in late September of 2022. At this point in time, the whole thing was a bit of a disaster. After all, while the Optimus was able to wave to an audience, it couldn't even walk. Yet ever since, there have been some major improvements. To date, the Tesla Optimus is reportedly able to self-calibrate its arms and legs and perform a yoga pose. The hope is that when it's finished development and out for production, these robots will cost less than 20 grand a pop, making them a cost-effective substitute for humans. However, this doesn't mean that the Optimus is completely out of the woods just yet. That's because recent developments suggest that the Optimus may not be meeting expectations. 
First and foremost, it seems that Musk's prediction that it will be ready to ship by the end of this year is bogus, and while he recently claimed that it's, quote, the most sophisticated humanoid robot that's ever been developed anywhere in the world, end quote, the reality is, is that simply isn't the case. For example, humanoid robot maker Figure AI just signed an agreement with BMW and is hoping to ship its flagship model this year. Meanwhile, companies such as Aptronic and Agility Robotics already have their humanoids being test-run by Amazon in their warehouses. Even out in China, the country's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has published plans on how it will have a fleet of humanoid robots by 2025, with these reportedly being able to move at just 5 kilometers an hour and carry 50 kilograms. So it just may be the case that Musk is being a little bit hyperbolic in his claims. More generally, many people also doubt whether or not these machines will be a net positive for society at all. After all, there are many who see them as dangerous and believe that having humanoids on the mass market could only lead to widespread trouble. Worst of all, if they're able to replace a modern factory worker as well as tech CEOs think they will, all of the people put out of a job as a result will be left out to dry. So, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you believe that humanoid robots are a good idea, or should world governments be trying to can the idea? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.